Hi everyone. Hey. Happy Monday. Hope you all had a great weekend. And we are super happy to be here with you today. It is a gorgeous day today. We are so glad to be outdoors. It's about 70 degrees out. No rain, no clouds. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous day. And here's camera guy. For those of you that are new, I want to thank yes. you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our channel. We really Hi, appreciate Anna. it. I'm Callie Kim. This is camera guy, otherwise known as Jerry. And he's my husband and he films the videos for our channel. Yes. And our live streams are all about just community support, providing you guys a lot of resources, tips and tricks on how to garden and just being involved in a wonderful gardening community together. We, gar we, we garden, we live stream every Monday at noon Pacific time. So make sure that you join us. I always post the link on my Instagram and you can share that with your friends and ask them to come along and be a part of our community. So, well, well with that ahead. being said, I think it'd be really cool if we started off just by asking if you're a first timer, Will you jump in right now in the chat and say, yeah, I'm a, this is my first time here. Um, let's just see who you all are. Uh, hi, Lou. Uh, how do you say your name? Luz? Luz, I think. Luz, okay. Hi, Luz. Right. And uh, North Carolina, good to see you. So just throw down in the chat if this is your first one, because we've had a lot of new uh, people start following, etc., and we've told them about the live stream. I'm going to be reading here in my uh, iPhone here to see if anyone's um, doing that there. And while, while Jerry's looking for that, I just yeah, wanted to Sally. share our, our topic for today is mm -hmm. about three tips to get your emergency Shut vegetable garden, garden going fast. That's what gonna, we're going to be sharing about today. So stay tuned for that. I'll be sharing some tips and I want you guys to be thinking of your tips as well. All right. So we have some first timers. Sally, mm -hmm. um, well, I don't, she doesn't say first timer now, but um, gosh darn it. Conscious there was, Moon. There was just someone. Rosie, Rebecca, Chantel, first time. Hey, I'm Christian from Trinidad. First time here, the Quick Gardener. Very cool. I've seen you. Um, Rosie yes. Santos, first time. Hello, Rosie. Sally Broker, first time. Right Wonderful. On. Justin, Welcome. Right on. Bejeweled. Very cool. Kathy. Hello, right. Kathy. <laughs> Wonderful. A Jared, lot of, good to have you. A lot of first timers. Sorry, guys, I can't look at the camera. There's just so many, <laughs> like someone else just said, man, the chat just flies. It's just so hard. Uh, the chat is Zen. just flying Very right cool. by. Uh, another Denmark. Awesome. That's great. Okay, guys, thank you so much. And what I wanted to share first is um, a couple little tips for uh, growing an emergency garden fast. So, mm. All of us are in the same uh, situation here. We all want to grow veggies in our backyard so that we can grow some of our own fresh vegetables and we can minimize trips to the grocery store. So in order to do that, we really want to get our, our vegetable gardens up and running as quickly as possible. And that way we can have the fresh veggies for our family and get those gardens going. So um, the very first tip I wanted to share is even when you're getting an emergency garden going, I really encourage you to abide by my garden motto that I talk about in my book, and that is start simple and expand later. It's super tempting to dig up your entire backyard, even as a first timer, and plant your garden. But realistically, you're not gonna be able to grow probably all the vegetables that you want to eat unless you are a very experienced gardener. So I really encourage you just to start simple. Start by asking yourself, especially if you're first timer, what vegetables do myself and my family like to eat? And then pick a couple of them, maybe two or three, and then plant those and grow those and enjoy those vegetables with your family. And as you get a little bit more confidence and a few more skills, um, you're gonna be able to expand your garden and to increase your growing space and to plant more vegetables over the next couple of months. But start simple with just one or two and then as you learn, you can expand your garden as you grow. Hey, we got Kathleen here from Long Beach. She's also another educator. We have a lot of people in the education field here. Good to have you because you're not in class today. So that's cool. Wonderful. Hey, Brett, good Welcome. to see you here, Brett. Long timer there too, Brett. That's great. So I wanna go into the chat here and I want your tips on how you have started your garden simply. Maybe now you're um, an experienced gardener and are growing a lot, but think back to when you very first started and give me your start simple expand later tips here in the chat mm. and we'll read them out and then um, encourage the people who are first timers on how they can get started in a really quick and simple way. So before I hear from you in the chat, I wanna give one suggestion on how to start simple and we're gonna expand on this more later but i would encourage you to start with just one container of greens did i bring my lettuce down here with me oh i have my greens back here um maybe you guys can 
Well, that, that's basil. Oh. Right back here <laughs> is a that. container of, <laughs> of uh, kale. So um, salad is a great way to start. So I would encourage you to grab yourself a container, look around your house, see what you have, or you can grab these over on my website and plant some seeds like lettuce in a container and grow yourself a salad. It's a perfect way to start. It's a very easy vegetables to grow. Okay, edu educate yourself about the veggies you want to grow from rudimental gardening, absolutely. Do some research, um, and I always encourage you guys to experiment in the garden. Um, we have lots of videos, of course, on our YouTube channel. You can look up playlists, you can go onto our YouTube channel and search for the vegetable that you want to grow, and most likely a video will pop up. Mm -hmm. But do your own research, connect with other gardeners in your area, and um, do what you can to experiment as you go along. We all make mistakes, but they're all just learning opportunities. Yeah, I well. really suggest the playlist a lot, um, just because they'll be by topic, and then all the videos related to that topic, Kim has linked them all up together, so really go for that. Oh, we have a lot of people really from Africa resource. here today too, so hello Africa, Wonderful. great to have you all here. That's great, great, great to see people from uh, all over the world. Yes. Um, uh, Patsella, I'd recommend lettuce or beans for fast and easy gardening. Yeah, those are both really easy vegetables to grow. And we're actually going to talk more about that in just a moment, Patsella. So thanks for mentioning that. Here's Rod. He lives down in Baja, California, or Baja, wow. Mexico. Um, Rod says, started with one thing, peppers. I know Rod loves Smart. peppers. Took three tries, but finally grew some. From there, I added more things to my garden. So absolutely, Smart. Rod, and I love how you didn't give up. You kept on trying, and um, even if it doesn't work at first, you just keep on planting more, and then you refine as you go along. Yeah, Rod posts beautiful pictures on Instagram of his um, plants and what he's growing and stuff. So if you're on Instagram, check out Rod. His name is his handle there on he's, Instagram. He's actually I Want a Garden on Instagram. Oh. Yeah. Um, that's okay. <laughs> Nicole, I love this, Nicole. Always think about what you what you do eat the most and incorporate that into your gardening. Great suggestion, Nicole. Um, you definitely um, want to grow what you eat the most so that way you don't have to go out to the grocery store all the time and get it, especially now. Um, I don't want to go into the grocery stores at all, so um, do what you can to grow from your own backyard. Jessica Davis. Hi, Jessica. How are hey. you? Great to see you. Um, Amaran Japat, start with radishes. Great oh. suggestion. Those are so easy to grow. And if you have kids in the house right now, I know they're all at home, radishes are so much fun to grow with your kids, you guys, because they sprout um, in a couple of days under, you know, probably the temp if the temperatures are between 60 and 75 degrees, and then you can harvest them in about three weeks. So they're a really fun one. The kids really enjoy growing those too. Mm. Have we done radishes? We have, yeah. We have some growing right now. Oh. It's up on the deck. <laughs> okay, uh, Danielle, great suggestion here. I started with lettuce, kale, and microgreens. My lettuce seedlings seem top heavy and fall over though, not sure why. Okay, Danielle, are you growing um, them indoors? Because sometimes um, they do get a little bit leggy. When, when a seedling gets leggy, it means it has kind of a thin stem and then it it's not super strong and stocky and it does tend to kind of flop over so that happens for a couple different reasons um, maybe they've been growing indoors too long and you just need to get them outside and get them planted or maybe they're too far away from the light try and keep them if you're growing them in a grow light try and keep them about two to three inches away and that way it'll help them be a little bit stronger so give that a try Okay, let's go into our second tip for growing an emergency vegetable garden fast. And that would be start with containers. So a lot of you, if you're gardening for the very first time, it might seem very overwhelming to find a garden space outdoors if you don't already have one set up, if you don't have a raised bed. It might be really overwhelming to build one or to think about digging up a portion of your lawn. So a good way to get started almost immediately is to grab yourself a couple of containers See what you already have around your house that you can use for containers. Get really creative. You can use five gallon buckets. Always drill holes in the bottom. Um, you can use those containers that you get at the garden center that you might have laying around your house that you've already planted things in. I know they have them for free at the garden center. You can use plastic bins. Of course, my favorites are the smart pots like you see right back here. They're fabric containers. They're breathable. 
durable and they're super easy to pop up and fill with soil and you can get the Cali Kim ones on my website although they're going so fast I am sold out right now but hoping to have some more in by the end of the week so definitely keep checking back so get some containers going pop them up fill them with soil and plant something even if you just have three or four or two or three containers it's a super great way to get your emergency vegetable garden going almost immediately <laughs> and rod i can't watch and look at the chat at the same time i know it's crazy <laughs> that's going by really fast today <laughs> So um, we do have a whole garden series on container gardening that you can use for a resource. It's called the Small Space Garden Series. So search my channel for Small Space Garden Series. And we're also gonna be doing a new um, Small Space or Container Garden Series coming up in April. So stay tuned for that too. Oh, I thought you were gonna say something. No, nothing. <laughs> I, I was just reading Jessica saying how much she loves her smart pots. And oh, yay. She just said something else too that, uh, especially in these times, it's nice to get outside and smell some earth and greens. Definitely. That's right. Right on, Jessica. Jessica just started gardening in, uh, I think, with lettuce. Yeah, she's and, hooked. Yeah, she's hooked. <laughs> um, she's actually my niece, mm -hmm. and please, guys, go over and check her out on Instagram. I want to give you a little hint here. She's a Wonder Woman, so you don't want to miss her Instagram profile. Go over and check her out. <laughs> okay, um, Jean Marquis. Hey Kim, today I'm doing a compost in a smart pots container as described in your video on small space gardening. I have all of the materials. Is there a reason you did not use coffee grounds? Um, I'm trying to think back to that video. That was a couple of years ago. It could be I just didn't happen to have any on hand. I don't remember. Um, you can definitely use coffee grounds in your compost at any time. And that is a great way to compost in a small space. What I did in that video, guys, is I actually put all my compost materials in the blender to break them up into almost a compost mush or pre-compost mush. That way it helps the materials break down very quickly. So please feel free to use compost in your um, smart pots, um, small space composting. And if you wanna compost, that's a great way to do it. You don't have to have a big, huge space. Mm -hmm. So go check that video out as well. And that's in the small space uh, garden series too. So good job, Jean, getting your compost started. Okay, uh, let's see here, any other questions? Tom, hi, Tom Hancock from South Africa. Hello, so great to have you Very here, cool. Tom. Yes. Really love your show. You inspired me to start my channel. That's awesome. It's really fun to be able to share what you love to do and what you're good at with other people. And um, just to teach other people um, how to garden is a great um, way to pass on your, your love and help people be healthy at the same time. Yeah, and right below that was rudimental gardening has 25 pots going right now. Oh my gosh. Smart, well, I don't know, smart pots, but 25 pots going. That's great. Wonderful. Wow, it's a lot. Yeah, so pick a sunny spot in your garden and pop up some containers. And hopefully, you guys, if you're kind of struggling with, I have no idea where to put my garden, I have no idea where to start, I'm brand new to this. A good place to start on our channel if you're new is to start with the Spring Garden series. Basically, it takes you from starting from seed indoors you can start four to six weeks before your last frost date inside and then it takes you all throughout the whole process shows you how to set up some simple grow lights that are inexpensive how to get your seedlings transplanted over the weekend we did a video on um how, where how, uh, how to pick a spot to put your guard put your very first garden very simple to do that so go back and watch that video and you'll have all the tips you need on uh, where to put your garden outdoors Right on. Let's okay. see. Uh, Yvonne from Roseville um, just uh, planted more of lettuce outside. Way to go. Nice. And Nicole, today I found out that my yeah. grandpa would grow his potatoes in old tires. And as they grew, he added more. It grew up to five tires. He got tons of potatoes oh, to store through the winter. What a cool story. I love that. That's so cool how um, we can learn from our from our elders, from our grandmas and grandpas, and use some of those tips. And now is a great time. Everyone's trying to be more resourceful with what we do have. So I love that tip, Nicole. Thank you so much for, for, for sharing that. <laughs> uh, Kiko Mangaric says, hey, can this live chat be every day until the stay-at-home <laughs> lift is, is uh, removed? That would That's be really funny. fun. We are gonna try and live stream another time this week too. We're thinking maybe Wednesday or Thursday Yeah, we're evening. thinking for another hangout this Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. PST again. Yeah, where we're going to do Wednesday? Yeah, that's okay. what we said. Okay, yeah, yeah so we Wednesday? did it. Is Wednesday good that with everyone? For you guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Um, we did a little Friday fireside chat. If you missed that, you can watch the replay, but we're going to do another one this Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. And um, I will post a link on my Instagram that morning and also on my Facebook. My Instagram is Kim 29 And we have had a lot of questions. How do you join in the chat? So if you're brand new to this live streaming, I know sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, mm -hmm. but make sure that you're signed into YouTube. You can, you can watch the, the live stream. And then if you're signed into your YouTube account, you can also join in the chat. So make sure you do that so you can participate. It's a wonderful, wonderful community here. A lot of people come back week after week. Jessica, thank you so much. I'm having so much fun as a beginner baby gardener. And we welcome gardeners of all levels here because we all learn from each other. Mm. The new ones, there's several experienced gardeners on here that are always helping answer questions. And it's really a, a lot of fun in this community here. <laughs> And we all need the connection right now, right? We're all going stir crazy staying at home. Hey, this is pretty <laughs> funny. Andrea over in Denmark meant to stay up for our fireside chat last Friday night, but she fell asleep. Thanks, Andrea. It was middle of the night for her. So yeah, you got a free pass on that one. But we hope to see you this Wednesday. I think it's midnight at yeah, that's what possibly. She was, so that's, that's what she was saying. That's late. I'm that's not good funny. with midnight any either. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, hi from Bethley. Hi, Kim and Camera Guy here from Brooklyn, New York. Hello, my tomato seedlings are now limp. I think I may have over watered them. Yes. Any tips? Okay, that is actually, Bethley, you're not alone with that. A lot of people um, tend to over water their seedlings, so I totally get that. Um, don't despair, let them dry out, um, and then try and just water them when they need it. You can go back and watch our how to water and fertilize your seedlings video for some little tips on that. But um, just, you know, check the color of the soil. Once it turns light brown, that means they need water. If the, if the top of the soil is already dark brown, most likely they don't need water. But you guys know what I always say, always plant backups just in case something goes wrong because something usually does. And that way um, you don't, you know, you're not out your, your seedlings. So get some new ones started and you'll be well on your way to some new tomato plants. What's kind of ironic about the whole overwatering thing as you look for another comment there is that um, it's, it's with good intentions because you want to love on these things. Yeah. You want to see them <laughs> succeed. So yeah, they need more water. So it's kind of funny. It's true. We tend to overwater or overlove our plants. Yeah sometimes okay jackie i love this jackie i love growing a pizza garden in containers and setting it on my front porch that's a great idea theme gardens are so much fun so jackie for a pizza garden i would imagine you're growing tomatoes maybe basil maybe peppers and that way you have everything you need all in one spot to harvest for some nice fresh pizza so great idea jackie a salsa garden is another fun one i have a salsa seed collection on my website and um, a lot of people really like growing that as well Okay, Nicole, strawberries were my very first plant and I overwatered them so much. Yeah, <laughs> so tempting to do that. Okay, um, casual preparedness from the Gulf of Alabama. Hello there. I've been planting vegetable seeds under sunny, clear blue skies the past few days. And that's a great idea because we, since we've all been doing the stay at home thing, we all need to get outside. And first sunny day, yes, get out there, get your garden planted. If you're not able to get outside because it's too cold, then plant something indoors. So I had a okay. comment here. Go ahead. Kim. Okay. I'll so find it. let me, um, I'm going to talk about the last tip that I had uh, planned for today for growing your emergency vegetable garden and I want to hear a lot of yours as well but the last thing my last tip is when you're, you when you want to start a garden fast you want to grow quick growing vegetables that you can direct sow or directly plant seeds right into your garden and then get the other ones started later but some really good um, seeds that, vegetable seeds that you can directly plant right into your garden beds or into your containers are things like lettuce any kind of greens pretty much like arugula, kale, and chard, all the greens um, are so delicious and so tasty. They're gonna give you a lot of good nutrition and um, they'll grow fast. You can have those fresh salads. And the other two vegetables that I love to plant that grow very fast are peas. Um, they're so beautiful. They vine um, up a trellis. You can use little tree branches for trellises. Cut some, you know, thin out your trees, use the tree branches. 
and they grow from seed to harvest in about eight weeks. They're cool weather vegetables. The third one that I love, and kids love this vegetable too, or love to grow it, is beans. Beans sprout fast. Even here where we're still getting cold nights, the days have been in the 60s, sometimes 50s. My beans have still sprouted. They're growing a little bit slower, but um, they are really gonna start taking off this week. So get yourself some, some uh, greens, some peas and some beans, direct sow them right into your garden beds or containers, and you're gonna have your emergency vegetable garden ready to harvest in about six to eight weeks, at least something to harvest. Now, if you're still getting frost where you live, um, you might wanna start some seeds indoors. And um, once you get your emergency garden started, get some tomatoes and peppers going inside and watch our spring garden series for all the how-tos on that. Nicole, or Rolla 504 thank you so much. She super chatted, $24.99. Wow, that is so sweet. Thank yeah. you so much. And her comment hmm. says, hey guys, great to finally be able to catch you live. Kim, yes. you have been a big inspiration for me starting my own garden this year. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm From here New in New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans too. Wow. I mean, that's such so much going on there right now. Yet yeah, you're giving to us. Thank you. Thank that is you. so kind of you and your words have really got me choked up here. I just, I, I sometimes it's just hard to, you know, think about who's taking in what. I don't, I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling. But yeah, there's so much really going neat, on. That's a neat message. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing that. Okay, um, let's see here. Question. So what, what I want to hear from you guys in the chat now is what other vegetables do you like to direct so right into your garden beds that take off fast so we can all have some ideas on emergency vegetables that we can get in our gardens and get to growing really quickly. So I want to hear from you guys too. Ashley Breen, this is for your mother. Tell her she is welcome. She thanked us for the the tips and stuff. So oh, you good. tell her she is more than welcome, and I'm glad to hear that they're helpful and she's enjoying the videos and stuff. That's great. Very cool. Okay, um, let's see here. Mm. Jessica O'Brien. Hi Kim. I planted the blue scotch curled kale from your seed packet, and they just germinated. I planted six inches apart. Is that too close? <laughs> packet said six to twelve inches. No, that's perfect, Jessica. And you're gonna love that kale. It's a really beautifully, beautiful, ruffly variety, super tasty, and six inches apart is absolutely perfect. And what I've been doing is planting a bunch of kale and then even transplanting the little seedlings, if they grow too close, transplanting them into another area of the garden so they can spread out and grow even more. Natalie B says okra is fast growing. Yes, okra is. Do we have is. that in the front? We don't right now because okay. okra um, really likes the heat. So oh. it's, uh, I'll be planting some and it grows really, really well in the hot weather. And it's a beautiful, beautiful um, vegetable. It's not my favorite to eat, but it's very, very pr pretty. And a lot of people in the South yeah. and really all over the place, a lot of people really like it. Yeah, I remember when we had them going right back there in the corner of the thing. That's right. Uh, Reed says radishes. Radishes are a great fast growing one. Okay, um, Sharon, or Sh Sharon, wait, I lost her comment there. Okay, Shara, I'm in zone 9B. What can I direct sow right now? Okay, Shara, that's the same zone that I am, and you can Ooh. direct sow just about anything right now, especially the cool weather vegetables you wanna get started, um, like the ones I just mentioned, the greens and the peas and the radishes. And for a, a, a complete list, or not a complete, complete list, but a good list of cool weather vegetables, Grab my book, guys, because this is a great resource <laughs> for you to have right now. It's got a whole section on what cool weather vegetables are and what warm weather vegetables are and kind of the guidelines on when you can plant them. So what I like to do is just give general guidelines and then you do have to look at your weather conditions and then figure out which one of those vegetables will do well in your climate right now. Potatoes, yes, potatoes are a great option. Nisha spinach. Spinach is wonderful. She oh. says tomatoes. So tasty. Nancy says she loves the book. That's awesome, Nancy. Thank you. Carolyn Moody has a question about ants in or on your strawberries. Um, you know, oh, that's those are so annoying because they, once they climb all over your strawberries, you're not going to want to eat them, right? <laughs> or, or get inside your strawberries. You can mm -hmm. make little DIY ant traps, and I do have a video on that. 
And I believe you make it with, um, if I recall, it's been a while since we've done that video, but I think it's with borax mm -hmm. and sugar. So look that video up and then you can set your little DIY ant traps around your garden and most likely the ants will go to that, hopefully instead of your vegetables. Hi Tika from Texas, good to have you. Okay, Nicole Horry. Hi Nicole, how's it going? How do you keep your kale from the white moth that lays their eggs? Last Ooh. year they got hit with them. Okay, yeah. Struggle is real. That is crazy. In case you guys haven't seen those little white, or maybe you've seen those little white moths flitting around your garden, they actually lay <laughs> eggs and then um, become little green caterpillars that like to eat, especially kale. Um, one thing you can do, Nicole, is as soon as you plant those little seedlings or as soon as they pop through the soil in your garden, um, you can cover them and make like a little, um, what are they called? A row cover. And I've used sheer curtain, old sheer curtains before, um, but you do have to catch it right away before they lay their eggs. Other than that, um, you can uh, spray off your plants with a stream of water to help wash off the little bugs and the little worms but they are really tough to get rid of. You can also try neem oil, mm -hmm. um, which is a good option as well. Funny story about that as you look on is that I remember we were filming a video back here. I go, hey, hang on a minute, Kim, let me get some B-roll of these really pretty white moths. And she, you were like, no, we don't want those in the video. <laughs> I go, what's the deal? No. The, they aren't really our friends. They're not something we want to have around. Uh, okay, here's a good question from Kipsiver, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not saying your name right. Kipsiver Doctor, can I get your book from Turkey or get an ebook? Love from Turkey. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Turkey. Wow. You can check on Amazon and see if, mm -hmm. you, I know my book is on Amazon, and see if um, they ship it to Turkey. I bet they probably do. Mm -hmm. I can't ship signed copies to Turkey, but look on my website. It does have other links there on where you can get my book. It's not in an ebook format right now but I do have an, another ebook on my website. It's a, it's a lot shorter and more concise. So if you want that, you can definitely um, grab that over on my website, which is CallieKimGardenHome.com. Shara, thank you so much. What a cute, um, is that called a, a gift, right? Those little things are called gifts. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a cute funny. little gift. Thank you so Aww. much. Um, $4.99. Thank you oh, so much for the you. super chat. That's so so cool. sweet. <laughs> it's nice to bring a little bit of fun and levity to our, our live stream and our, our lives right now too, right? Yeah. I don't know how you do that. I'm not sure how you put a GIF in a super chat. I don't know. <laughs> hey, do you have a time for a question? Sure, yeah. Okay, Ashley Breen asks now, um, I'm going to be planting strawberries soon. Should I plant them in a pot or in my garden? Okay, that is really totally up to you. It depends on your space. Um, they do like to spread out over the period of a couple of years, but you can't always transplant them if they spread too much. You can take some out and then transplant them into another container or another pot. So that is totally your choice. Um, I love to grow them in crate towers. A lot of you guys might have seen those videos that Go we've done on playlist. that. Go and check those out, Ash. Definitely. And lots of tips for growing strawberries too, like how to um, root little strawberry runners so you can create more plants. So yeah, look on our playlist and lots of tips on growing strawberries there too. Right on. Okay, Organic mm -hmm. Gardening in North Carolina. How are you doing today? Thanks for joining us. Dave here in North Carolina. We I keep losing the comments. The chat's going so fast. Um, we are having a super early spring. I've already planted tomatoes. Wow, that's pretty early for you guys, isn't it? So, but you can't wait to taste those delicious tomatoes. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're welcome, Ashley. I just built my first crate tower. Okay, Ooh. Melissa, wonderful. Good for you. That's a great way to grow a lot of veggies or fruits in a little bit of space. And did you guys know you don't have to just plant strawberries in it? You can plant lettuce, you can plant um, kale, you can plant even small little tomato plants in it. So go over and check out our strawberry lettuce crate tower video for some more ideas. Oh, how oh my nice, gosh, Peggy. Another, another gift thingy. <laughs> Thank you, so Peggy. Cool. 999 Super Chat. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, appreciate your support. That you guys nice. are gonna have to tell You're us welcome. how to do those cute little gifts in there, because that's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Nicole Rodriguez, is it okay if there are caterpillars in your plants? Um, no, actually, because they like to eat your plants. So <laughs> a couple years ago, we not only had the little tiny green worms, but we yeah. had the big fuzzy caterpillars. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yep. They were all over my kale and I probably picked probably 10, 20, 30 yeah. off plants a day. It was Kim crazy. Kim would pick them off one at a time. 
I mean, they're really pretty caterpillars, but I didn't really want them on my on my kale or on my greens. So yeah, you don't really want those. <laughs> Speaking of pretty, can you just um, make the camera go forward real quick and just oh yeah, show them what we're looking at here. Oops, here we got pretty right there. See, see Mac, he's chilling uh, out in the outside, and over yeah. here you can see. The nasturtiums are starting to cascade down the hill, so it's really pretty. The um, the rain is really greening things up. In fact, I should scooch over a little bit so you can see these beautiful nasturtiums right behind me. Aren't those pretty, you guys? So I want you guys to hang in there. If you're in the cold, like I know a lot of you are still in the north, like in Canada, <laughs> hang in there. We're gonna bring you some warm warmth here on our channel. Spring, hopefully, is coming soon to your neck of the woods, too. <laughs> Cliff. Yeah. Hi, Cliff. How you doing? Yeah, everyone's saying hi to Mac. That's so cool yeah. that you guys enjoy Mac. I thought you might like to see him. Mac Quick. seems to cool. know whenever the camera comes out. <laughs> now, those nasturtiums, you can eat them, right? Oh, yes, you can. Didn't I do that on you a did. live stream or was it in a video? I think it might have been in a video. We yeah. harvested yeah, some. I ate it. So, yeah, nasturtiums grow really fast. They're a super easy, um, cool weather flower. And the flowers are edible, too. So, a good one for you if you're new to growing flowers. Really easy. That's the challenge for the week, everyone. Find an insertion and eat one. That's right, or plant one. I've got them in my seed collections too. Okay, um, let's see here. Oh yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you guys for all of your patience in our online store. We have been getting tons of orders in and I'm so excited because that means a lot more of you are growing vegetables this year. Camera Guy is the seed packing uh, person right now, as well as our son Drew and myself, but it is taking us a little bit longer these days to get our orders in the mail because of mm. the high volume. So thank you so much for your patience. We really appreciate it. So we're really thank trying to get all the orders shipped within three days. Sometimes it might take three to four days. So thanks for your patience. Thanks for all your support. We really do appreciate that. And I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying the seeds and are growing a lot of your vegetables. Thank you, Andrea, for pointing that out. We missed a super chat, but Oh, hey, Mrs. Green Thumb. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry we missed your super chat. Yeah, no. I'm trying to scroll back and find it. Yeah, what is that little? Um, what's that little? Canada. Ca I think cartoon it's a, character yeah. thingy down in there. Um, my hero. Oh, I how forget sweet! What those my are. hero. That's so but sweet. Thank you, Mrs. Green Thumb. And I think that means three dollars Canada. So thank you oh. so much, Mrs. Green Thumb. I appreciate Yay. all your support. Very sweet of you. Um, thank you. Yes, thank Thanks, you so Andrea. much. Okay, my strawberries, Miss for Mr. Crazy Cool. My strawberries have little black buds and I think they're called aphids. Do you know mm. black bugs? Do you know how to get rid of them? Okay, Crazy Cool, they probably most likely are aphids. Aphids can be, can be, there's all kinds of different aphids. They can be black or green. Sometimes they're kind of a whitish color. So um, what I would very first do is go back and uh, I've got lots of videos on how to, you know, do pest control organically in the garden. First of all, rinse them off with water and try and do that every day. A lot of times they every won't day. come back to your plants. But first try that because it's the most inexpensive method. Um, you can also try a dish soap water combination. And you can also, of course, try neem oil, which is a really good organic um, pesticide. And you can grab some over on the restedgarden.com over on his website. He's got a really good kind that works great um, to organically control the pests. Yvonne oh. A, how sweet. Wow, you guys are so sweet. Thank you, Yvonne, 1999 Super Chat. I rarely catch your live stream because I work nights and I really appreciate wow. all the tips. And knowledge oh. you share. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much, Yvonne. That's really nice and it's great to have you. Great that's, to have you. That's a tough shift. That is very tough. So I appreciate you um, right on. staying up today for us if you're normally asleep right Thank now. Thank you. Thank you. Cliff says he just something, uh, um, I'm getting nervous. What, what is the plant we were just talking about back there? The nasturtiums? Nasturtiums. He just planted some indoors. Oh, yay. And they have germinated. Going to put some in pots. Oh, That's great. great. Oh, Angela did. Okay, she was talking to Cliff. Wonderful. That's great. Nasturtiums, um, you can also direct seed them right in your garden beds. That's actually another good one I should have mentioned um, is direct seeding nasturtiums. They actually grow almost better when you direct seed them when, than when you try and transplant them. And most likely... Once you plant them one time, the next year, they're gonna reseed and come back. So that's one great thing about nasturtiums too. Okay, Tiara H. 
Is it too late to start my seedling since my last frost date is April 16th? Okay, no, it's definitely not. Um, get them started, get them started now. Starting indoors uh, four to six weeks before your last frost date just gives you a little bit of a jump. That way you have transplants growing and as soon as the weather warms up, you'll have nice, strong, healthy plants to put outside. But definitely not too late. Get some started. Now is a great time to start your seeds either indoors or outdoors depending on where you live. And um, again, a lot of this is covered in my book. So if you have, if you're struggling a little bit or just want a really good resource, grab this because it's really going to be a resource you can even take out in your garden with you. It's packed full of information, and that's exactly why I wrote it so that you guys would have all the tools that you need <laughs> to get to growing your own veggies. Nancy's planting nasturtiums in an old barbecue. Oh that's my really gosh, clever. that's a great idea. It's gonna look so pretty too, spilling over the sides. I love the creativity there, the repurposing of an old barbecue. Yeah, great idea. Okay, let's see if there's a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. And before we sign off for the day. Okay, from, from Huma M. I've been using smart pots for three years, but looking to buy a raised bed this year. Mm. Do you always companion plant? Are there large veggies you don't recommend for a small 24 square foot garden bed? Okay, companion planting first off. Um, I do not always companion plant. Um, I plant a lot of things together, like tomatoes and basil are a nice thing to go together, but um, you don't always have to do that. Again, I would start with what you like to eat. Um, let's see, I lost your comment here. And for a 24 square foot garden bed, um, you just kind of want to follow the general guidelines as far as spacing goes. Um, and you can find that in like our uh, spring garden series. So again, if you're planting tomatoes, you might want to plant them a couple feet apart. Um, a squash, you might want to plant one or two in a 24 square foot bed. But um, you can always go in and, you know, thin out vegetables as they grow and transplant them into other parts of the garden. But again, we're giving you guys general guidelines here, but experiment, see what works best for you. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and just make things work for um, your, the growing space that you have. And by the way, did you know that raised beds are very easy to build? Sometimes they're very expensive to buy online, but we have a video on how to build one for under $25. So make sure you go back and just enter that into our YouTube search in, on our channel and you, that video will come right up. Um, in fact, I think we linked it up in yesterday's um, video as well. Yes, I believe so. Man, there was someone oh, here from Norway and I lost the, lost the, uh, but uh, she, they just said thank you for all your tips and videos, etc. from Norway. Great to have you here. I'm sorry Aww. I can't find your chat, your comment in here, but good to have you. Norway is just a little bit north of us. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Might still be cold up there. <laughs> Okay, Amelia, what is a good fertilizer for tomato and peppers? Well, my favorite fertilizers to use, and I pretty much use them on, on everything, is number one, compost, of course. Um, if you can, make your own compost, and um, very easy to make. Now, especially, a lot of people are home. You, it'll be easier, easier for you to save your garden scraps, save your coffee grounds, and get some compost going, so that's number one. Help us all be more self-sustainable. Um, number two is worm castings. And uh, I use Vermisterra worm castings. They're a great soil amendment, really help your plants be healthy. And then the third one that I love is the Good Dirt Plant Fertilizer, which you can buy online. All those links are in the video description of this video once it uploads. Um, and the Good Dirt has really good nitrogen that helps bring about that green leafy growth in your plants and it really works well. And Rod said fish emulsion is good for tomatoes and peppers too. And yes. Yep. Great, yeah, I've used that too in the past and that does also um, work well. Okay, nice. one last question hmm. uh, before we sign off. And don't forget, we're gonna live stream again on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Let's talk one more question here. Wait, five? 5.30, 5 .30. sorry. Yeah, that's okay, <laughs> I just wanna make sure I'm in the right place at the right time. Okay, Jessica Luna. Hi, how are you, Jessica? Great to see you on here today. How do yeah, I get Jessica. rid of powdery mildew from kale in Anaheim? Should I start the whole thing over again? Okay, Jessica, first thing off, um, first, first things first, powdery mildew, um, pinch off um, the leaves that are affected right away to get rid of them. And then you can make a milk spray, and I have a video on how to do that. Um, I'm trying to think, I believe it's eight parts 
water to one part milk, but go back and check the video. And you, you wanna spray it in direct sunlight. It definitely helps control it. So that's the first thing. Um, with kale though, what you can do if it's really severely affected is don't pull your whole plant out. Cut off all the leaves, cut your kale off kind of at the base of the plant and kale will grow back. So I've had kale that's grown back five, six, seven, eight times, lasted two or three years. Um, so you'll be amazed at how it bounces back. So if it's beyond saving with bugs or powdery mildew, try that, and especially now it's getting warm here in California, it'll grow back in no time. All right, guys, this has been a ton Ooh. of fun. It's great to see so many of you on here. We have 337 people here today. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and really appreciate it. Excited for all of you out there growing your very first vegetable garden. Get those emergency vegetable gardens planted with the tips we shared. And we're really looking forward to seeing you guys back for a live stream on Wednesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna do a fireside chat? We'll do fireside. We'll fireside. be casual about it. Just kind of hang out together, check in on everyone, see how everybody's doing, what's new, right. how your week's going on and that type of thing. So Looking grab your families, it. grab your snacks, grab your favorite beverage, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.